Full City Dark. Mm. What a tremendous cup of coffee. You mean real Italian coffee? <laughs> Sorry, it's commercial. I'm just that kind of guy. Uh, one thing I did discover this morning, I was uh, checking out the news highlights with Sandra before she took off to work. And they played that new Ikea commercial. And the, the song is like this. Da, 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 da. And I was like, it's it's just so beautifully done. But if you're feeling stressed, you know, you should just hum that at that IKEA commercial. I mean, Jesus is the more um, lasting solution, but it, it does something to your body. It's just like so peaceful. It's like you're watching the little worlds, everybody's little world they live in and swing sets and kids on swings and the, the sound of children's voices with the guy leading the song. It's like, oh, it's very peaceful. It's very peaceful. Da, 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 da. Anyway, I have no idea what the song is. I'm sure if you have a phone, you can ask it. Wanted to bring you a little bit of good news this morning. This is from Romans chapter one, and I want you to listen to how many times he says the word the words good news which is the gospel in uh, in the new living translation they say good news because that's what gospel means in the new international version or other versions it would say gospel but i want you to hear the gospel as your good news this morning we need the gospel every day verse one of romans one <clears throat> excuse me Romans chapter 1, we need to pray first. Lord, for whoever is watching this and for me, I pray that your good news would permeate our hearts. Surround us, Lord, with your presence. Fuel us with hope, we pray in Jesus, your Son. Amen. Romans chapter 1. This letter is from Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, chosen by God to be an apostle and sent out to preach his good news. God promised this good news long ago through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The good news is about his son. In his earthly life, Jesus was born into King David's family line, and he was shown to be the Son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Verse 12 says, I want to encourage you in your faith, but I also want to be encouraged by yours. Verse 16 and 17 say this, For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. Let's break it down. Verse 1, Paul says, This letter is from me, Paul. I am a slave. Now normally, a slave would not be a happy person. Paul is so happy to be a slave of Jesus, a servant of Jesus. Notice, he doesn't even call himself the Apostle Paul. Paul and Peter, Peter and Paul were the two, you could easily say the two chief apostles revered around the Christian world. Paul wrote half the New Testament. But he says, I'm just a slave of Christ Jesus because I'm willing to do anything for him because he did everything for me. And I'm not any better than anybody. I'm not an apostle. He is, but he says, I'm not high and mighty. I'm like you, and if you want to be happy, you need to find you're worth serving the true king. Chosen by God to be an apostle. Paul was like a Pharisee. He was like a zealous Pharisee. But he says, I've been chosen as an apostle, and I've been sent out to do one thing, bring good news to the world. And the good news of the gospel the good news of Jesus Christ was promised a long time ago and God came through. And it was actually promised way back in Genesis chapter 3 when the first people sinned 
And right away in Genesis 3.15, God says, yes, you've sinned. Yes, you've cut yourself off from this Garden of Eden and the world's never going to be the same. But I will come and rescue you. I will send someone to save you. That was way back in Genesis 3.15 where God promised he would make a way. The good news is about his son. So, make sure that if you're a person that says you're a Christian, a Christ follower, that what your life is about is the good news of Jesus. And make sure that when you are proclaiming your faith, that it is about Jesus and nothing else. It is he and he alone that can bring hope for you and the world. You need to keep that in mind. You can't get distracted. Don't let yourself be distracted by anything else. Make your life about the good news of Jesus. And Paul said, I passed on to you what is of first importance, that Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world, and he rose again, and he ascended to the right hand of the Father, and he's coming again. That is the gospel. Don't get distracted by anything else. No peripherals. Jesus died for our sin. He was risen from the dead to beat death. He has ascended to his throne and he's coming again. He's going to fix this place. You got to keep the gospel. The, that is the good news. That's got to be your focus. In his earthly life, he was born in a King David's family line. So he knows what it's like to be one of us. He walked this road. He walked, God walked a mile in our moccasins, right? And he was shown to be the son of God. So he, he was born into the human line of David, but he was shown not just to be human, but to be the God-man when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Adonai, our Kyrios, as the Greek says. He is our Lord and hero. And, and here's the great news, guys. He was raised from the dead. And, um, you know, right now, the world needs to be rebuilt by people like you and me who have the Holy Spirit. He sent his Holy Spirit into us. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you and me. So may he use you to speak this good news over the world, to pray for people that don't yet have it, to get a chance to tell them the good news that Jesus loves them. Yesterday, I was sitting outside. Um, it was a beautiful afternoon. So I grabbed a coffee to sit at the picnic table to sit in the sun for 15 minutes because I knew it would be the last time I see the sun for about 10 years now because we're in Sigamoose. But um, I was sitting on the picnic table and this lady walked by. She says, I've been listening to your services on the, the, the front lawn of the hub. We were there for 20 Sundays. And she says, I miss it. She lived a couple doors down. And I said, well, we're at the senior center now. She says, yeah, I was sitting in my yard and listened to church. And she says, it's so good for my heart. She found out she's dying of a brain tumor. I was able to pray for her and reconnect her with the good news that Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. And I said, do you believe that? She says, yes, I do. She needed some good news. And I realized that, that the Lord had me wait outside because she needed that good news. And you got to realize you're the, you've been placed in the place, the workplace, the school, wherever it is you are, you've been placed there on purpose to be a dispenser of that good news, to speak that simple truth into someone's life, to bring the good news and Verse 12 says this, Paul wrote this to the Romans, the Christians in Rome. I want to encourage you in your faith. I want to encourage you in your faith that you are God's plan to reach the people around you. And you are the dispenser of the good news, the proclaimer of the good news. So make that your lifeblood. Make that your mission. But he said, I also want to be encouraged by yours. And I tell you today, I would love it if you would share a story with me um, about how God has brought the good news to someone around you or how your church is doing that. 
Um, but but focus on the good news. Don't don't focus on anything else. Encourage this guy, please. I need encouragement right now to see that God's good news is working in people's hearts. And then remember the good news is your power to save you and the whole world. I am not ashamed of this good news. I'll proclaim it. It's about Christ. It's about the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the religious and the irreligious. And this good news is about how God makes us right in our in his sight. And this is accomplished from start to finish by faith. All you need to do is have faith that God has um, sent Jesus, that he's forgiven you from the cross, that he's risen again, that your sin's been wiped out. He doesn't hold anything against you. And it is your power and it saves everyone who believes. Um, it's not a respecter of persons. It's the power of God at work. And guys, he's still changing lives. He's still changing the world. Don't let the darkness of fall um, or the, the bad news get you distracted from the good news. The good news is the power of God at work. If, I'm, uh, if I've had a draining appointment and I'm getting in the car to drive to the next one, and I've even got just five, ten minutes. I put on some Billy Graham or some Tim Keller. I listen to ten minutes of the good news. And it, it brings life to my soul. It really resurrects me. It empowers me for the next thing. So you guys got to focus on that. And um, you will be encouraged. God wants to use you to change the world. And he wants to change your heart. Um, the dry bones receive the word of the Lord. The Spirit of God breathes life into dry bones and turns dry bones into an army, standing tall and strong, confident in the good news that God's got a plan. And that's why there's hope at seven, because Jesus is the good news. And he's what we need today, isn't he? Let me pray for you. May you encourage these folks. Father God, with this good news, that we are an unstoppable army of faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Thank you that you came to save me. Thank you you came to save us. Use these folks today and myself as well. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, send me um, some good news over Facebook. preparing something to share with the world. These things will make sense to some, but not to others. I'm here to start a revolution.
care is for women, for the vulnerable. Blasphemy is not harmless. Well, the Pharisees were pretty upset. Sometimes you gotta stir up the water. They're martyrs with a persecution complex. Take me down to the water. I want to kill him. Just take me down to the water. Do you want to be healed? <laughs> I have something that's open to all people. Get up and walk. If he was supposed to be healed, God would have done it himself. That's an interesting point. Your fame is spreading the good kind. You have certainly livened things up around here. World travels fast. Fellow cousin. My heart is yours. My life is yours. John the Baptizer was taken into custody. Jesus of Nazareth. We finally meet. David, Goliath. Maybe there is hope for the little. What we're doing here will last for generations. I want my people to participate in the healing of the world. I do not feel very much worthy. Who's worthy of anything? You. The one comfort we have is to know that we're doing it together. If not now, when? I'm here to preach the good news of the kingdom of heaven. I make a way for people to access that kingdom. In this world, bones will still break. Hearts will still break. But in the end, yeah! the light will overcome darkness. Hey there, it's Dallas. I'm the creator of The Chosen, and if you haven't seen season one, or if you want to see season two, you got to get The Chosen app. It's free. It's easy. It connects directly to your streaming device. You don't even need a subscription. Go check it out.